Okay, guys, I'm here today with Hiram Gracie, huge honor for me. And uh, guys, for those who doesn't know him yet, he just won the World's Open class as a brown belt this year in the IBJJF. And uh, he's already the Gracie who has the best curriculum from brown belt to from blue belt to brown belt. So he pretty much won the words on every belt as a blue belt, as a purple, as a brown belt. And purple, he won the double gold, and brown belt, he won the open class again. So incredible what he is doing. And you guys will see in this video how great of an instructor he is. And uh, he was just explaining to me on, on another video as well that you guys can check here in the channel about how he thinks about jiu-jitsu. And if you watch him competing, it's really incredible because most of the matches he starts losing and nobody can really do anything to him even though they're winning. And then all of a sudden, he falls on top. And when he falls on top, the match is done. So, Harry, can you explain Thank a you. little more of yes. everything you're Thank doing? Thank you very much for the kind words. So uh, when we talk about jiu-jitsu, right? My, I mean, I go back to my family and I see how jiu-jitsu should be learned in my belief, right? When you start getting into a gym, it's you know the hardest part will be the white belt. And it's very easy to, to dive into flashy moves and dive into the, the ultimate goal, which be, would, would be submissions, right? So you you want you to, you know, let, let's say you're learning a language, you want to know how to ask things and make whole phrases and start singing in French. So in Jiu Jitsu, the same thing, people want to start singing, but you got to go from the beginning. And the, the main thing, in my opinion, the, the way that I like to uh, teach my students, is how to not tap. So first of all, you should be able to train with anybody and not tap. It should be untappable, right? That should be your first goal. So you should be almost like almost like stalling, right? The second goal, after you have mastered that, nobody can tap in the academy, is to escape safely, right? Because escaping, you, you end up exposing yourself quite, quite often. And then you have to find out ways that, you know, you, you worked on to escape without tapping. So still, you know, carrying on the first ability onto the second part of jiu-jitsu which you did not tap to anybody now you can escape safely without exposing and the third one once nobody you know can hold you in bad positions and nobody can tap you now you jump into controlling right so transitions and controls so once nobody can tap you you can escape safely from any position then you can start controlling your, your partner your opponent so then let's say you got out of the triangle or whatever then you can start passing the opponent's guard. And once you take control, the last one is to submit. So once you have established the whole control, your partner can't even blink, then you go for the submission. So I, I learned jiu-jitsu this way, right? So my goal as a yellow belt, my cousin was trained with me, Gregor and everybody, and they would try to tap me. And of course it was, a, it was very hard, but I was starting to get better until the whole gym you know, had a very hard time to be able to, to tap me. So that's how I learned it. And then when I go to tournaments, I know that the guys can get in a very, very good position. I will not tap. And because I will not tap, not because I'm gonna go to sleep, because I sat up and, and I'm able to, to defend myself, the time will come for me to actually be in a good position. So that's that's the way that I look at it. And that's the way that I, I fight. Yeah. yeah, no, that's incredible. And watching you competing, that's exactly how it feels because you're losing and then sooner or later, you find a way to escape, you get on top, and once you're on top, it looks like they cannot move anymore. So it's so precise what you're doing when you're passing the guard. And then you get a, you get them on, it really looks like harder a lot. You get yeah. them on and you, you go Thank for you. a choke or it's something a very like good that. Very good compliment, very good person to compare me to, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. and then guys, by the way, uh, Hyron got his black belt from Kira Gracie, and he's pretty much training under Roger Gracie as well in London. So uh, he's, he's yeah. learning like the best of the best of the best Jiu-Jitsu. And it's so cool to see that even though his Jiu-Jitsu looks like Roger's Jiu-Jitsu a lot, it, it's like your flavor kind of like, it's yeah. your, your, your way of doing the, yeah. the, what you were bringing from, from yeah. Roger. You know, like. The way I like to look at it is my family has so many people, right? I mean, there's so many Gracies. There's Gregor, Roger, Igor, Halls, Kron, Hicks, and, Killer, right? There's, I mean, so many hoilers, so many champions, right? Um, and for me to, to choose one person to like learn everything from, I'm neglecting everything that, you know, all the other different details and everything that they added. So what I have been very fortunate to, to, to live, and I think <laughs> a very egoistical thing that I'll say, I might, might be the only human on earth that has been able to have this pleasure to learn from the best graces in the family, right? Best fighters in the family yeah. and outside. So I try to combine the best from each of them, right? 
So yeah. Kira's ability to be very light and still be uh, very hard to control. Hodger's close guard, Hodger's mounts. I mean, Hodger, everything is amazing, right? I mean, Bernardo's uh, uh, under overpass, right? Everything. So I try to get the best and combine it all to what I think is the most efficient way to fight. Yeah, no, and, the, and it's true because you were living in New York, so you were training under Gregor. Yeah. And you had like Igor, Hollis, Hanzo. Neyman. Neyman. Yeah. And then you, you, when you go to Brazil, you have Kira. I see you with Hickson, Gracie, all the time LA, as well. Yes, exactly. And then you go to London and train for Roger. So you're pretty much like... In the, Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I went to no. San Diego, trained with Clark, got some Mama Plata, so... No, that's incredible. Yeah. No, that's incredible what you're building and what you're learning, which I think it's even more important than your results. Yeah, thank you. But uh, anyway, so what are you going to share here today, honey? So today, we, we've seen, I like to call this the blanket. Roger is very good at it. Right, I mean, he's the one that mainly taught me a lot of the, the details. And uh, the, the way that I like to look at this pass, and the, the, the reason why I like it so much, is how much effort you put into it. There's pretty much no effort. And every time you're, you're you know, you learn a new move or you see a new move and you're thinking about learning it, the way that I like to, to measure it, if it's good or not, to rate it, is the amount of effort that I put into it and what I get in return, right? So if I'm trying to pass Bernardo's guard, if I have to constantly use a lot of strength and my partner has positions that he can you know, put me in danger, then that's not a good pass that I want. I want to pass that by the time that I do pass, I'm barely sweaty. That's my goal, right? So this pass, I like to call it the, the, the wet blanket, right? Because it feels like a blanket on top of your partner. Wet blanket. <laughs> yeah. Not only blanket, wet, wet blanket. Wet is worse than <laughs> just a blanket. And uh, again, you literally, the name says it all. You feel like a blanket on top of your partner. It's not a matter of, you don't have to be big to do this move. You don't have to be agile whatsoever. You don't have to have a good cardio. That's the best thing about it. So as you're here, pretty much, I'll make it as simple as it can be. You're literally just laying on top of your part. Now, some things just to, to get into the, the concept here is nowadays you see people passing guard, right? I mean, from, from ever, from always. And then they reach in with the legs closed. When you reach in with the legs closed, Bernardo immediately tries to, you know, get your leg, control your legs. Now these people use a lot of lapels, you know, very annoying, they wrap your legs around. For you to stop this, you come down, and now you, you stop this, but now you're giving them grips. So now you get this cycle, and then you break this, and now you got control of your legs, so you, you, you never end in cycle. So the difference here is that I'll be close to him, but I'm putting his shield here, yeah. But now look. He cannot gain a, a significant control of my legs, or actually not at all. And I'm just laying here. Bernard is the one making all, you know, all the effort, using all the effort. I'm just here. And now it's just a matter of time until something gives out and I can find my way either to the pass or to the chest to chest control. This is a very good way for you to train as much as you want. Imagine I train with Bernard and I was constantly jumping to the side, right? I'm gonna get us out in five seconds. So as I'm here, right, Bernard is putting the knee shield strong. He can even put his hand here to block me, open his elbow, open the elbow up here. Yeah, like that. Boom. So I just began inch, it feels by, heavy. inch by inch, look, inch by inch. Yeah, that's crazy. Getting close to him. Finding my way in. Getting the chest to chest. Boom. Slowly, right? And Bernard is already, you see, he's... He's, he had to use a lot of effort to hold really it. really heavy, way heavier than you are. Exactly, that's the goal, right? Whenever you train someone, and, uh, and people say this a lot a lot uh, about Hodger. Say, man, Hodger is really strong. Well, Hodger is not strong. He can barely do 10 pull-ups. Be mad at me, but <laughs> it's true, you know? He's not very strong. It's the way he consistently puts pressure that changes everything. So as I get on the half guard, the main thing that I want to do is to feed the lapel. And why should we feed the lapel? We don't have to, we could hold hand to hand, but by doing so, not only I'm limiting the amount of, you know, uh, support that I have, I'm exposing myself to be swept onto Bernardo's left side. So if he locks my arm on this side, I can easily be swept here, right? Yep. So I could not worry about the lapel and hold the armpit, that's an option. But instead of doing so, I'm going to feed the lapel. Because now there's no chance of my hand is leaping out if he pushes me. So I, I give as much as I can. I turn my palm towards me so my knuckles are on the mat. And most, like nine out of 10 times, I submit from this position. The secret to submitting from the half guard 
is not to do the obvious, which is to apply pressure on my partner's neck. When I put pressure on his neck, it's uncomfortable, but it doesn't make him tap. Why? The reason is as I apply pressure, my, my shoulders move slightly up, upwards, and then it ends up going to his face. The pressure, imagine you're trying to choke him from his chest. So apply the pressure downwards, and then you will transition onto the neck. So look at the difference from here. Look, this is annoying, but not enough to tap. Now look at this. Oh my God, man, this is crazy. You see, it's a huge difference. Yeah. So you go down, and now you start to elevate your hips slightly, look. Boom, until you have it and you hold on to it. Man, this is crazy. And your partner taps. And I'm not this wasting. Is insane. And I'm not wasting any energy at all. You know? I always laugh here. My, my hands are. <laughs> <laughs> you know. no, that's crazy. Don't sleep. You know? yeah. No, the, that's crazy. The best thing is that it's not, I'm not using strength at all. You just literally. What, what exactly you're doing? You're using your shoulder versus like almost like my chest dash diaphragm ish? Yes, exactly. So the, the pressure, you see what I do? Yeah. It's hard to see with the gi, but I'm applying pressure into his chest, into the middle of his chest. Okay. And then as I begin applying pressure, I'm trying to literally choke your chest pretty much. Yeah. I'm laying into his chest. And now look, look how my shoulders slide. Look. That's terrible. But, yeah, this is insane. But it slides flush, you see? Yeah. Instead of going on the shoulder, on the on the neck, look how it goes up. Immediately look at the look at my shoulder on his chin already. Yeah. You see, here's uncomfortable, but he's not gonna tap. Yeah. Here, look. Wait, this is horrible. This is horrible. <laughs> oh my god. So imagine laying around here for five minutes. You just hang around. Yeah. And even if they don't tap, they might end up opening the half or doing something stupid here. And, that, that and that's the whole goal. Whenever you're training, you should never look to do the obvious, right? Which is the obvious. Trying to open this, right? Yeah. Trying to break this or something like that, right? Mainly. Yeah. But close the guard. As I get the half guard, it's not trying. You, that's the art of not trying pretty much. Look, I'm just here. Resist a bit there, Bernard. I am. Yeah, that feels horrible. So, by changing his focus and all his options out of what really matters, which is me trying to pass his guard, he's focused on this, and this becomes a lot easier. That's why, for example, you see a lot of people who, oh, they make it look easy. It's because they're changing their focus, they're not doing the obvious. So, as I'm applying pressure, my knee, and of course, as I'm applying pressure, I want to point my whole body into the part that matters. So right here. Boom. And what he'll do, he'll try to push me, right? He'll use his hand to alleviate the tension. I'm going to push his forearm, four fingers up, palm facing me, upwards. And I'll place my head down. And by doing this, I'm thinking a lot of steps ahead because momentarily I'll be trying to mount and he could use this hand to stop my knee from coming up. Yep. Which you won't, he'll not be able to do so. So I'll push this up and I'll be here. Yeah. If you're tapping him, and I time. have no chance to get there. So it's not even up, like I don't have to lock it up, it's just here. Because now, look, as my knee pops out, try to touch my knee or do anything. There's no way. You can't. From here, my hand will slide underneath. Just like so. Even if he keeps his arm here, what I'll do now, notice how he still has the half guard locked, okay? Yep. I will transition, so I'll let go of this one. So I bring him this way. One, two. Thumb goes into the collar. And I'm here. Now. Yeah, there's no way for me to. Completely stuck there. Now, I want to get his tricep in front of my face, in front of my chest, sorry. So I use my shoulder to push it forward slightly. This hand comes up and holds his wrist. Now I'm here. Now, my hands, stay where they are the only thing that will move is my chest look and i'm in this position now notice how he will open his guard by himself look as i put pressure and i start to turn oh my god yeah. <laughs> yes, it seems insane the amount of pressure that there is here his guard opens and you see i'm not i'm not i'm barely sweaty i'm not doing anything barely any effort so once again he has the guard locked as I replace my chest and I have a deep, grip, a deep grip here on the collar, look how, as I turn that way, look at his guard. Focus on his guard there. 
Yeah, know. it's crazy. Yeah. You see how I didn't even touch it? No, and I love it about how like, because uh, you know, everywhere learns like, oh, you get them out and then you put the thumb inside the call of force the person. So, so you're pretty much taking like a very basic move that everybody knows, but make yeah. it very sophisticated and very, you develop a move a lot. And, yeah. and it becomes almost like unstoppable. A hundred percent. Because when I started competing, I was faced with two choices. Either I had to prove something new that worked, right? So I had to develop a new move and prove a whole different concept and scenario. But how can I become, you know, very good, very fast? Is by taking already what's been proven to work, what my whole family and I mean, many fighters already proved and they competed and they used it, which is proven to work. And develop it. And develop it, make it better. Because I know this works. Yep. How can I make it perfect? How can I do it while Bernard, I tell Bernardo, I'm going to do it and I can still do it. Yep. That's my goal with each move. Yep. Moves that you have seen before a hundred times, there's some new details there, I mean, that make it very, very hard to stop. Yeah, no, man, that's incredible, incredible. Yeah, and guys, if you, if you watch it higher on competing, that's exactly what he's saying. Like he's taking the very basic of jujitsu and applying with the most efficient, in the most efficient way possible. And the, the people on board barely can move, you know, like, so guys, Hyro shot this entire structure all about guard passing, all about like how to deal with flexible guards. And the uh, seven hours of content, he almost broke the record here for like longest instructional videos. Yeah. And then time to stop, I kept going. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's going to be at bjjfanatics.com very soon. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And uh, I think now, after watching this video, you guys already know how great of an instructor Thank he also is. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I, I wanted to wait, right? Uh, we talked many times before. Yep. Blue belt, purple belt, brown belt. And uh, I mean, the techniques were good. But I just really wanted to wait until I got my black belt to share everything I've been saving up for many, many years within my family. So I'm glad you guys will be able to take an insight of uh, what, what we've been working oh, on. And you're thankful that you're actually sharing that because yes, many times you see people who learn a lot, but they don't. But you were the yeah. one like putting everything in the yeah. world, I, even I, before you achieved the, the yeah. your goals as a black belt. You know. Like. Yeah, I, I think that I've seen some people not teach things that really work and keep it for themselves, right? In general. And I think that that's not very smart at all. I mean, jujitsu, the, the beauty of it is seeing like your training partner, for example, get better so you can get better, right? Cool. And seeing jujitsu getting better, I mean, it's, it's price that you see and uh, be part of it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's incredible. Yeah, so guys, make sure to check it out. Uh, I just shot an entire instructional all about guard passing and dealing with flexible guards. It's gonna be at bjfanatics.com very soon. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So hope you guys enjoyed and thanks so much. Thank you. Me. Thank you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel, just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.